Welcome back everybody. Today, we're gonna to be talking about axles. Recently, Ash and I decided we're gonna be one ton swap in the green Cherokee. We're gonna be talking about which axles we considered and which ones we ended up going with. My goal of this video is to also help you decide which axle is best for you. We're gonna be talking about three different front axles, Dana 30s, Dana 44s, and Dana 60s. So here are some of the axles we're gonna be talking about today. We have a Super Duty Dana 60, a high pinion Dana 30, a Sterling 10 and a quarter, and a Ford 8.8. Now we're gonna be focusing on front axles today. So we're not gonna really worry about those two back ones. They're just there for comparison. We're gonna be talking about the Dana 60, high pinion Dana 30, and unfortunately I don't have one, but a front Dana 44. So this Dana 60 and this 10 and a quarter are what's gonna be getting swapped into the green Cherokee. And just for comparison, mm -hmm. this high pinion 30 and that Ford 88 are the exact axles as what we got in the green Cherokee right now. So you can just see the physical difference between all these axles. These one tons are incredibly larger than those other axles. The original plan for the Green Cherokee was to swap in a set of Dana 44 axles out of a JK or a JL Wrangler, preferably out of a Rubicon just because those axles from the factory come with electronic lockers, a 410 gear ratio, or something else along those lines. And they're slightly wider than what we got in there right now, which is the Dana 30 and the Ford 88. Now, the first thing you need to consider when you're gonna be swapping in any axles into your rig, it doesn't need to be one tons, just any axle under the sun, is what is the application of your rig? Are you gonna be rock crawling with this thing? Are you gonna be overlanding? Are you gonna be going extremely long distances across the country with it? Do you drive this thing every day to work or does it only see the trail once a week? These are all things that need to be considered before you do any axle swap. So I compiled the list of a few basic specs for each of these axles. We're gonna be using the 97XJ Dana 30, the 99-04 Super Duty Dana 60, and just general Dana 44 specs. So to start off, we have width. The Dana 30 is gonna be 60.5 inches from wheel mounting surface to wheel mounting surface. The Dana 44, is, depending on which generation Dana 44, it's gonna be anywhere between 60.5 inches to 67 inches. And the Dana 60 is gonna be 69 inches wheel mounted surface to wheel mounting surface. So the next thing is gonna be axle tube diameter and thickness. For the Dana 30, we're gonna be at two and a half inches in diameter and quarter inch thick. The Dana 44, generally it's gonna be two and three quarter, quarter inch to half inch thick. And for the Dana 60, we're gonna be at three and a half inches in diameter and quarter inch thick. So you may be wondering, why would I go with the Dana 60 if it's only quarter inch thick and I can get a Dana 44 with half inch thick walls. That's because the strength of these axle tubes is not based only on their thickness, but also by their diameter. So for spline count, from the factory on a Dana 30, you're gonna be at 27 splines. Generally on a Dana 44, you're gonna be at 30 splines. And for this Dana 60 in particular, we're gonna be at 30 splines as well. So I wanted to talk axle shafts with you guys real quick. Right here, I have a driver's side Dana 30 axle shaft as well as the driver's side axle shaft out of my 2003 Dana 60. So right off the bat, you can tell that Dana 60 axle shaft is incredibly larger than the Dana 30. Like I said earlier, we got 30 splines on the outside right here and 27 on the Dana 30. And we got a much larger U-joint inside this Dana 60 axle shaft compared to the Dana 30. So I know I keep saying splines, 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 and what do all these numbers mean? So right here, for those of you who don't know, these are the splines on the axle shaft. They're basically ridges on the axle shaft that transfer the torque to the wheels. The number of splines on the axle shaft directly relates to the diameter of the axle shaft as well. More splines means it's gonna be stronger due to the surface area and the larger diameter of the axle shaft. In my experience, something that plays a huge role in deciding which axle to choose is whether or not the axle has selectable hubs. 
from the factory on a Dana 30, you're not gonna be seeing any selectable hubs. I believe there are some aftermarket kits out there where you can swap selectable hubs onto a Dana 30 though. For Dana 44, depending on which generation you choose, it may or may not come with selectable hubs. So that's something to keep in mind. And for our Dana 60 in particular, it does come with selectable hubs. For a good example on selectable hubs is my old solid axle swap Chevy. We have a Ford Kingpin Dana 60 swapped under here out of a 1990 F350 which means over here, we have selectable hubs. So when the hubs are in the free position going down the road, there's nothing spinning in this axle. And as soon as we put it in the lock position and lock the hubs, and then we lock the transfer case in the four wheel drive, we're in four wheel drive. Now something else that is a giant factor in these axles is the weight of them. For a Dana 30, we're only gonna be seeing about 150 pounds, give or take a few pounds. For a Dana 44, we're gonna be somewhere around 150 to 200 pounds. And for the big one, the Dana 60, we're gonna be at about 530 pounds fully loaded. So along with the basic info I gave you guys for each axle, I decided to come up with a pros and cons list for each one as well. This information is based solely on my experience and what I would recommend. So pros for a Dana 30. Up to a 35 inch tire reliably is what I can, would consider basically the biggest tire you can run on a Dana 30. They're definitely out of all these options, the cheapest and the most plentiful. Dana 30s can also be found in high pinion, which is definitely the more desirable option considering high pinion versus low pinion. The weight compared to the rest of these axles is definitely the lowest. Like I said, only 150 pounds. So cons for the Dana 30 axle, tire size can also be considered a con. You know, maybe you wanna run a 37 or a 40, like I said, I would only run up to a 35. As people have done it all the time, they run 37s on Dana, Dana 30s, maybe even 40s and 42s. You know, I've seen it all. You're definitely gonna be running into some problems and I wouldn't consider that reliable. And another con would be you can find these axles in low pinion, which are obviously the less desirable option when you're comparing high pinion versus low pinion. So I wanted to show you guys the difference between a high and a low pinion. So I have the Dana 30 high pinion here, and I actually do have a low pinion Dana 30 outside, but it's under some snow. So we'll be using the 10 and a quarter for the example of the low pinion. So for the high pinion, you can physically see that the pinion is above the center line of the axle. And for the low pinion, you can see it's below the center line of the axle. So here's another good way to put it, or another example, if you will. I have an old ring gear out of a Dana 30, and then an old pinion either out of a Dana 30 or an 8.8, not really too sure, but it's fine for the example. Here's the center line of our diff, or our axle. And on a low pinion, our pinion is gonna sit below that center line, and on a high pinion, it's gonna sit above that center line. High pinion can also be referred to as reverse rotation. High pinion or reverse rotation is generally the stronger of the two as well. So Dana 44 Pros, you can run up to a 37 to a 40 inch tire reliably, depending on which generation Dana 44 you're gonna be running. The weight compared to a Dana 60 is a lot less. I would definitely consider that a pro. And like always, depending on which generation Dana 44, they can also be found in high pinion. So a con of the Dana 44 would definitely be the price depending on which generation, Dana 44, I know I keep saying that a lot, they can get pretty expensive. You know, for a JK Rubicon Dana 44 set, I mean, the cheapest I saw was $3,500. You know, ready, they're ready to go other than the brackets you would have to weld on to fit in a XJ or a TJ, but that's pretty pricey in my opinion. Another con is you can definitely find them in low pinion as well, the less desirable option. So the Dana 60s, specifically the one we're talking about, 99 to 04 Dana 60s, you can run a 40 to a 42 inch tall tire reliably. These Dana 60s, as far as I know, they're all gonna be high pinion, which is definitely a pro. Ground clearance is definitely gonna be a con of this Dana 60. You know, that center section is freaking massive. And you know, if you're running a smaller tire size than this axle, say a 37, it's gonna bring that axle down closer to the ground. You have a more chance that you're gonna be hitting rocks or, or whatnot on the trail. The biggest con of all for this Dana 60 is definitely gonna be the weight. You know, 530 pounds. That's a lot of axle to be carrying around, you know, everywhere you go on the trail. So price is also a con. These axles can get pretty expensive. You know, I, I would say a fair price for these axles would be anywhere between 500 bucks to maybe 1500 bucks. So after considering all that information, the same information I gave you guys, I decided that we we're gonna be going with the Super Duty axles. And there's a few reasons for that. Now, one of the biggest reasons, like everyone's always saying, is tire size. 
Right now we're running 35s on the green Cherokee and I absolutely love 35s. I think they're the the best like all around tire, you know, for a daily driver slash weekend warrior, basically what we're doing for a very long time. But we wanna step it up now. We wanna be able to do a little more on the trail, do a little more challenging things and get to more challenging places. And to do that, we feel like we need bigger tires. So we considered 37, but we really wanna go 40s. I think we'll be able to do what we wanna do with a 40 inch tire. Now, one of the next biggest things why I don't wanna keep that Dana 30 in the 8.8 is just because that Jeep is really skinny, really top heavy. It's, it doesn't make for the best combination off-road when you're getting off camber. And you know, we could fix that if we put on something other than the JK wheels. It would make it a little wider, but we like the JK wheels, that's all. Now, we are gonna be switching them out when we go to the Super Duty axles. Obviously, they won't fit on those, but I just don't wanna get a whole new set of expensive wheels, you know, B-locks and all, for that set of axles. I'd rather save the money for wheels once we're done with the Super Duty swap. Now, probably the final and, you know, probably the most obvious thing why we went with these axles is the price. Now, I looked into Dana 44s. I looked into, like I said, I looked into JK 44s. The cheapest set I could find was $3,500 on Facebook Marketplace. And you know, it's not too expensive in the long run. You know, they come with lockers, they come with decent gear and like 410s most of the time. So you know, that's really not a bad price. You just gotta weld some brackets onto them and they're ready to bolt into the Jeep. I decided to go with the Dana 60 and the 10 and a quarter because that's what we have already. I bought my Dana 60 and my 10 and a quarter for $200. Now, then I went ahead and I spent another $200, $100 per axle to get them sandblasted because you know, they were New England axles. They were rusty and crusty. And now they're cleaned up really well. I'm only into the axles for $400 so far. I got them from a friend who bought them for $200 for just the rotors, the calipers, and the hubs. And then once he was done with them, he said, hey, do you wanna buy these before I throw them up for sale? I said, yeah, I mean, I can't pass up a set of one tons for $200. So they sat in my garage, you know, wherever Ash and I moved for the past two and a half years, which is quite a lot. You know, I brought them all the way from Massachusetts to Colorado, and I wasn't really sure if I even wanted to use them. I considered selling them at some points, but we finally decided that this is the way we're gonna be going with the green Cherokee. So I think this is a step into the right direction. We're finally gonna be able to one sun swap one of our Cherokees. You know, it's something I've been waiting a very long time to do. I just didn't think our Overlander would get it before our wannabe rock crawler did. <laughs> so we're gonna be put, putting these axles in. We're gonna be re-gearing them probably to 538s and we're gonna be going with a 40 inch Pro Comp tire, same tires we're running on the Green Cherokee right now. We're gonna be doing ARB air lockers front and rear. Pretty excited about that. Now the cheapest way to do a 110 swap in the Cherokee is don't, don't mess with coilovers. <laughs> don't put coils in the rear either. Just keep it leaves in the back, coils in the front. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be putting a really nice set of Alcon leaf springs in the rear. It's a shop that's local to us. They custom make leaf springs and I've seen their work. They are incredible leaf springs. I cannot wait to get my hands on some and get them under the green Cherokee. Now, we're not gonna be changing the height of the Cherokee all that much, maybe an inch or two higher than it is to fit those 40s, but mostly what we're gonna be doing to fit 40s underneath the green Cherokee is install a set of notch custom fender flares. Now, these are fender flares that a lot of people have they're pretty expensive you got to do a lot of body work to get them to fit onto your rig you know i've seen plenty of jeeps with these notch custom fender flares on them and they look freaking amazing so i'm pretty excited about them now i think that's all we got uh, planned for the green cherokee as of right now you know this this process is going to take a while we're going to do it as as money allows basically you no know, we're not going to go broke buying all the parts right now for it we're going to be recording the whole process of this all the one ton swap process it's gonna be right here on youtube so our whole idea for this video was to tell you guys our plans for the green Cherokee and tell us basically what we're gonna be doing in the next couple months with it. And I hope this information helped you out because I know people are always wondering, which axle should I go with? And you know, it just comes down to reliability. You know, what tire can I run on what axle reliably? I hope this video helped you guys out. You know, just a little insight into the world of axles. If you guys like the video, definitely give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. It really helps with all the YouTube algorithms. It really makes us happy when we see new subscribers. Leave us a comment down below what you wanna see on the channel next. We got so many trips planned. We got a lot of in the shop content that it's gonna be coming your way. We're pretty excited about it. We'll see you guys out on the trail and we'll see you next time.